Hello there. Why oh why is everyone missing the point? The real truth is that Michael Gove's attempt to define extremism is yet another symptom of the destruction of the British way of life. Let's be blunt. Without untrammeled inward migration, where integration is not just ignored but thoroughly frowned upon, without that, Michael Gove would not have been forced to stand up in Parliament and try to define the word extremism. Without this so-called multiculturalism, where the culture of the UK is the only one to be sacrificed, Lee Anderson would not have had to say during his Switch to Reform UK speech, I want my country back. Just think of all the legislation we would not need had immigration been gentle and well managed, with integration being right at the heart of it. What Gove yesterday tried to do is look like he's putting a bit of good old-fashioned Britishness back into the political system. All far too late and far too little. Something I'm sure he is well aware of. The Britishness of having an instinct across the nation and within its public servants that certain groups and people should never be given power, let alone become government advisers and receive taxpayer funding. A British instinct of loving this country. A British instinct that has been vilified and destroyed in a few short years. I see this whole extremism thing by the government as a mere sop to the British people it has given up on and no longer values. And Gove's attempt will not work in the way he hopes you will think it will. He is well aware that it will be morphed by the Labour Party and its advisers into yet another anti-UK brickbat with which to beat the British people with. The list of extremist groups will more and more soak up the ranks of the Brits who just want their country back. And when I listened to Gove's speech and the reply by Angela Rayner, I got very uncomfortable feelings about where this whole manoeuvre was going. Especially when the two of them were so amicable and agreeable about working together on this project. Now here's the part of Gove's speech on defining extremism and setting up a list of so-called extremist groups that angered me. But the government cannot be in a position where, unwittingly or not, we sponsor, subsidise or support in any way organisations and individuals opposed to the freedoms we hold dear. Across this House, I am sure that we would agree that organisations such as the British National Socialist Movement and Patriotic Alternative who promote neo-Nazi ideology, argue for forced repatriation, a white ethnostate and the targeting of minority groups for intimidation, are precisely the type of groups about which we should be concerned and whose activities we will assess against the new definition. The activities of, these extreme right, of the extreme right wing are a growing worry. The targeting of both Muslim and Jewish communities and individuals by these groups is a profound concern requiring concerted action. And it is important, just as with our definition of extremism, to be precise in the use of language when discussing Islamism. Islamism should never be confused with Islam. Islam is a great faith, a religion of peace, which provides spiritual nourishment to millions, inspires countless acts of charity, and celebrates virtues of generosity, compassion, and kindness. Islamism is a totalitarian ideology, which seeks to divide, calls for the establishment of an Islamic state governed by Sharia law, and seeks the overthrow of liberal democratic principles. It has its roots in the thinking of the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood, Hassan al-Banna, the founder of jamaat e islami Abu al-Maldudi, and the Muslim Brotherhood ideologue, Saeed Qutb. The Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood is, of course, Hamas. Organisations such as the Muslim Association of Britain, which is the British affiliate of the Muslim Brotherhood, and other groups such as CAGE and MEND give rise to concern for their Islamist orientation and views. So his first target was the far right. He's signalling his real priority. But nothing about the far left that has totally infested our establishment bodies. So he mentioned the following five groups that could be assessed under his new definition of extremism.
On the far right, the British National Socialist Movement and the Patriotic Alternative. And on the Islamist side, the Muslim Association of Britain, Cage and Mend. Now I had a quick look at all five of them and I could find no direct evidence of any of them receiving public money or that they were actively involved with the government in any meaningful way. In fact, in most cases, it seems that the government had already been targeting them in some form or another, some for many years. And I wonder if Gove is looking at the Muslim advisory group that has been advising the Met until they were dropped in November last year because they did not align with the Met's values. But the whole point of this extremism exercise, we're told, is to identify extremist groups to stop them getting involved in government and receiving public funds. And then Gove names groups that don't seem to need this new specific targeting. Now call me cynical, but had either of the right-wing British National Socialist Movement or the Patriotic Alternative ever received a penny of taxpayers' money, I'm pretty damn sure that the whole woke civil service would have been out on strike and blabbing endlessly about it to the press. Maybe I missed that bit. And then the shadow minister, Labour's Angela Rayner, said this during her riposte to his speech. Indeed, the Secretary of State is right to raise the concerns about the dangers facing our elected representatives. To which Gove later answered, Can I also say that I agree with the Shadow Secretary of State that the danger to elected representatives is growing and it is something that my right honourable friend, the Security Minister, has invested time, care and money to counter. Well, as long as they are safe, we can all rest easy in our beds. Can't we? It's all about their safety, isn't it? But Angela Rayner also said, We must be free to represent the views of our constituents. We all have a responsibility to work to extinguish the flames of division and never to fan them. Sounds to me like Labour is gearing up to represent their preferred demographic even more ardently than George Galloway is doing. I read all this as meaning that MPs will be representing their constituents' views, however out of step they are with the views and norms of the vast majority of the population, and that the far right, or what will be defined by a Labour administration as the far right, will be clamped down on. Hard. It is the British public that will be forced down the path of giving up their past to integrate into the way of life and religion of this new and growing demographic. Our woke establishment, that fully includes the Tories, is absolutely determined to destroy the UK and rebuild it into an unrecognisable socialist shadow of its former self. And the British public is the real target of extremism and hate here. I reckon that within a couple of years of a Labour administration, we'll have very strained relations with Israel, if any at all, with the last Jews leaving the UK. And the phrase, I want my country back, will get you locked up. <laughs> 